crazy, go crazy, go crazy, ah, ah. Go crazy, go crazy, go crazy, ah, ah. Hi, I'm Shonen, and today I'd like to talk to you about Vinland Saga, episode 8. There's, there's no jump cuts today. This is one of those episodes where I have to, uh, I guess one of those reviews, where I'm just going to be reading off of my script and uh, making up for it with a bunch of visuals. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get right into it. I just um, want to start off by saying I really enjoyed watching this episode. I know it's kind of weird to say, but it's just um, one of those things where you can just sit back and kind of assume what's going to happen next and just see it all play out. I was waiting for some twists. Luckily, we didn't get that. I like I half expected when the guys get to the uh, to the little wheat farm that we we're going to see the entire farm on fire or something like that. Because um, I was just like, well, it's, it's so obvious that, you know, the farmhands are, are, are hating on the little wheat thing going on here, the little wheat operation, but I didn't expect that to, you know, transpire in this episode. I thought that was something that maybe they'd get to in like one or two. So, you know, shout out to that. First off, I like how younger Thorvin is taller here because it kind of shows you how much power he still has over his, his, you know, current version. And also this is the only episode with the same shot at the beginning and the end, um, which is kind of funny because it also shows us Thorvin looking at his reflection in the beginning, which is exactly what Iron Eye says to him later on, right? He tells him, well, you should probably take a look, you know, at yourself in the pond um, nearby because you look like a completely different person if you haven't noticed. It also kind of reminds me of that one scene um, in season one where Thor is just telling that one uh, kid or whatever, hey, just don't stare in the in the, in the the sea, in the nighttime ocean too long, you might get pulled in. So I wonder if that's like a, you know, like a Viking thing or, or a Nordic thing where they're like, oh, you know, this, you can look at your reflection, but only in the daytime. I'm also glad Thorvin finally opens up because it just means that he and Einar, you know, aren't just getting close. It means that they are really friends, right? And we, we've seen that happen. Um, you know, that, that the solidifying of that friendship, right? Um, an episode or two ago where, you know, he looks at Einar, he's like, friend. Um, so it's good to see that, you know, with, with the seasons passing, Thorvin's kind of grown into the idea of having a friend. But honestly, I didn't expect him to open up this much, right? I thought he was going to leave a lot of details out or just not be ready to talk about some of these things, right? I didn't think he would, uh, he would trauma dump on Einar the first chance that he got, right? But I guess... It makes sense, you know, this is the guy you're sleeping next to in, in, a, in a stable every night and he's woken up every night by your terror, your night terror, your night terrors, sorry. Um, so it would only make sense to, you know, open up to him in full the first attempt and not just to hold everything back because truth be told, he could probably be like, yo, yeah, you're lying to me right now. I know the names that you scream out at night. But luckily he leaves one detail out, which is the fact that um, the person who killed Askeladd was King Canute. So I... I I'm very glad that Thorvin is either thinking ahead or thinking th that detail has nothing to do with my story, really. So, you know, why am I going to say it anyway? So, like I hoped, Thorvin isn't still upset about, you know, Canute taking his kill. He's more so just empty on the inside that now he has nothing to chase after. The source of his hatred, the whole reason he existed, right? This is a kid who, you know, at what, age four or five, six o'clock? Um, came into existence by going, oh, I have, the first purpose I have, which is to have an enemy, right? It's just to go to war, go to, go, go to war. And the, the first enemy that I see is the dude who killed my dad and I'm gonna spend the rest of my life going after him and then he doesn't, you know. I, I, I'm glad that he's not so salty about it. And you can tell that from like episode one of the season, right? He doesn't look like a kid who's, who's angry, right? He's, he just seems like someone who's defeated and just completely empty on the inside. So glad that we got that confirmation here. My only question is then why is he still seeing Askeladd as like a ghost, right? If, if he isn't something to chase after and Askeladd left them with some very good words, right? Just like become a true warrior, like forget about me type of thing. Then why is he still seeing Askeladd's ghost around? That seems like something that would be you know, for, for someone who is like seeing that person as a nightmare still. And then again, it could just also have to do with, you know, the, the heart hasn't processed it yet, right? It, sometimes you don't make sense when you're when you're processing through things. But if I'm going to be a uh, super duper theorist here, I'm going to assume that this the reason for this is that um, it has something to do with the one thing that Thorvin's forgot about. Now, there are just two things I want to note here when we get this moment um, from Thorvin realizing that he has no sense of direction at the moment or no real purpose right now. This is when they're building the roof together. First being, it kind of does set him up for like this red pill path in front of him where he's like, I have no purpose, but you know, I have the opportunity to build myself up, to build up my skills and become a real man. You know, just, just cultivating these, these super manly skills. I could build a house, I could farm, 
I could catch fish, you know, it's things like this. But the second and most important thing here is that um, this is Thorvin in a way realizing the wise man knows he knows nothing. There's nothing for me. I, I'm, I'm just, I guess I'm full of potential here, right? I guess I'm just an empty glass waiting to be filled, but I don't know what to fill myself with. And though Thorvin may have a bumpy road ahead of him, um, luckily for him, with Skurvel's or Zverkel's, sorry, sorry, Mr. Zverkel's mentorship um, and Einar's support. <clears throat> His future is looking kind of bright. Although to be completely transparent here, I will admit that Mr. Sverkel talking about how it's kind of a good thing that Thorvin is empty did remind me of, um, you know, the explanation of My Hero, where they're basically telling you why Midoriya was the perfect person to inherit it because he was an empty cup himself. And yeah, that's the last I ever mentioned that series. Funny enough, the second half of this episode is when I realized just how small scale but crucial these events are because the first half is about, what, fishing? And nightmares and then the second half is about wheat like this is this is all very tiny things happening in the world right now which is kind of cool like the events on this farm mean absolutely nothing when you compare them to what we got a couple episodes ago with like you know a whole full-scale war you know that Canute is conducting but you know they're kind of one in the same because what's everyone fighting over anyway land and resources and whether that's the land of whales or the land of wheat, we still get to see what throws a man into war when we see Einar start to like really rage out here. It's funny because the tables turn very quickly, right? Thorvin goes from the one who needs support to the one who needs to support, um, which is kind of funny. And then, you know, as, as they're going through this, right, you see Thorvin and Einar walking on two completely different paths, which I don't know if that was intentional, but you know, I'll take it anyway. Although Einar's justified here, right? You know, you can't just waste resources. Um, he'd technically still be in the wrong because it's still, this is still a slave attacking a free man, even though these farmhands also refer to Ketil as their master, which kind of brings into perspective how free are they. But, you know, they're also technically going against their master's wishes, which is to fucking farm, right? So who'd technically be in the wrong? I feel like Ketil would take, you know, the side of these guys in the end, right? Maybe it's that he's against them at first, but Mr. Sferkel vouches for them. And then he's like, all right, I guess. You know, I disagree with this guy on other things, but this is the one opportunity that you guys have here. And maybe maybe that's how this kind of wraps up. So yeah, I feel the boys are, are definitely getting away with this. There was one quote that Anar here had that actually slapped, which is, um, if they like you, you become chained. And if they hit you, this is what happens to you. Um, which is like really cool, right? Because this is the happy-go-lucky slave that we've been seeing. And he's finally breaking down and being like, nah, damn, I'm remembering how real the world is. Um, the world sucks and Thorvin here is just like, dude, you're supposed to be pulling me out of my hole. Like, chill out, chill out. Like, calm down. It's a, it's, a, it's a really good moment between the two. And then for this last section, I want to quickly go over what I think Thorvin forgot, which is, I don't think it's the old lady, right? I don't think that he just forgot there was that trauma there of, of him, you know, having a ghost that was haunting him. Um, and I don't also think it's the true warrior thing either because when he remembers Askeladd's last words, he remembers he tells him to, th th he remembers that Askeladd tells him to become a true warrior. But I guess in a sense that is the same thing, right? Because when you get more specific, what we see from Thorvid's like little, you know, inner monologue here, inner, inner uh, imagination here is that he's remembering his dad, right? He's remembering his dad telling him, you have no enemies, which is technically related to the whole true warriors don't need a sword thing. Whether he makes that connection, I have no idea. Um, I think it's connected, but that's that's technically what I think he forgot. And that, that's gonna be the next thing that pushes him to the next step right there is recognizing that and being like, oh yeah, uh, this, this is why I didn't wanna fight in the first place. Not because I'm just trying to keep it low because I'm a slave, but because this is technically what, what my subconscious is telling me to do. But yeah, that's all I got. As for what I think is gonna happen next episode, obviously we're gonna have to deal with the, um, the consequences of these actions. The boys look like they lost, so they might just be in jail, right? They might have to be waiting for someone to vouch for them to get out. They might be on the butcher's block. You don't, you don't know what's gonna happen next. Ketil being the not so iron fist that he is, right? Would wanna punish them, but probably doesn't wanna punish them very much considering what they're doing for him, right? But what if Thorgil is still around? then we have a round two of this whole, do I beat them or do you beat them? Do I take off an arm? You know, this guy's already got half an ear chopped off. Can't just take off the rest of it. Um, we might be dealing with something like that. Um, but I, yeah, like I said, I think at the end of the day, they're probably gonna be saved by Mr. Schwerkel. Um <laughs> or Arnhaid, who knows, who knows? Um, maybe this is when they escape, right? It's, just, it's like, oh shit, we gotta pack up and go. 
don't really know, but again, I'm along for the ride. This is not as fast as I thought it was, but considering this is eight episodes, it didn't, it doesn't feel like it, right? It's been out for two months and it doesn't feel like it's been slow at all, but considering where we are at the first episode to where we are now, it doesn't feel like a lot has happened, but you know, it, that doesn't feel like a bad thing. So yeah, that's all I got. Have a great day. Um, damn, I'm sorry. Have a great day. Uh, be safe out there. I'll see you very soon. I'll be streaming, but um, I will not be streaming Zelda tomorrow. You'll see why. All right, bye.